Hello everyone. So we've got a little different today, different format instead of normal. You don't normally get to see this room. I'm looking at some PS2, there you go, PS2 games today, which I've been asked to look at for the 4000 series APUs. This is the 4750G. I will be underclocking it to give you an idea of how it works on the 4350G. And that's about it really. I'm gonna look about maybe five or six games. First up, we'll be looking at Shadow of the Colossus. This is the NTSC version. I do not own this version, but I was asked to look at it, so this is purely educational purposes. I'll reiterate, you should not be using or emulating something that you don't own. But I'm not planning on playing it, so it's it's fine. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Now various games require various things. Here we have Grandia. Free. Brilliant game, I do love it. Running at 3x internal resolution. And as you can see, running absolutely fine. The most intense part of this game is generally the battles and running around the opening town, which is a bit weird. But 3x, no problems at all. And that's all good. So this game's got a lot of overhead. So let's whack it right up to 6x, which is essentially 4k. And as you can see now, it's running at the absolute limit of what it can do. We're hitting about 100% GPU usage occasionally when running around. And in combat, it, it's not been able to cope. So something like Grandia 3, absolutely fine on the 4750G. So you have no problems running this on the 4350G at 1080p. Okay, well here we have Shadow the Colossus. The performance is a little mixed. There are some major issues regarding the emulator and this game in general, mainly performance issues. There is some information on the wiki where you can adjust and try to increase the performance, but it seems to have some downsides. So there's a limitation of the actual emulator here, not the actual platform. GPU wise, we can win it at 720p. And actually in game, the performance is still not ideal. GPU is handling it. But, but the CPU is kind of struggling. I'm going to clock it to match the 4300G. This isn't like for like, of course, because the clock speed isn't the same and it's a different GPU, but it's close. So as you can see, it is struggling a little bit more here, but that's not a surprise. In the actual game itself, there's more headroom, so this should be playable at two times in terms of resolution. We just might get the odd dip here and there. Here we have Black from Crichton EA. This is running at three times the turn of resolution, once again the American version. Good game if you haven't played it. Control scheme's a little weird, but it's from that weird era. As you can see, at three times the turn of resolution, absolutely fine, no problems at all. CPU is running about 50% and the GPU is running about 50%. So, absolutely playable on three times resolution. Now moving up to 6x resolution, which is 4K, we start to hit the limit of this APU. GPU is running about 100% and the frame rate is now about 40 FPS average, so not playable at 4K, but perfectly playable at 1080p. Now on the underclocked APU, running at 3 times internal resolution, for whatever reason the emulator completely lost it, and no matter what I did, I couldn't fix this odd texture thing going on here. Tried a few settings, don't understand what's going on. Might be something to do with the clock speed and getting out of sync or something, but odd error. But I don't expect this to have an issue on the actual 4300G. And as you can see, it's playable at three times resolution. We're hitting about 70% of the GPU in this instance. Now the NTSC version of Gran Turismo 4, for whatever reason, I could not get to work at all. Just came out with a black screen, no matter what settings I used. No idea what happened here. So I couldn't test Gran Turismo 4, the NTSC version, but I was able to test the PAL version. As you can see here, three times in turn of resolution, we're hitting the 50 FPS cap with the GPU sitting around about 70%, and the CPU is topping out about 60%. So perfectly playable on the PAL version at three times in turn of resolution, and 
by extension the NTSC version should be fine as well if you can get it working. Well how about our fake 4300? Here we're hitting around about 95% on the GPU and CPU is fine again. So it might not be able to run the NTSC version on the 4300G. You might, once again, this is a simulated 4300G and it might not be that accurate. But it's borderline I would say. Two times resolution should be fine. I think here we have Ratiata Stories. Don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Running it three times in turn of resolution. There are a few hardware hacks here to get it to run right. But we're hitting around about 60-70% on the GPU. And the CPU is sitting around about the 40% mark. So on the 4750G, perfectly playable at three times the turn of resolution. You might even be able to knock it up a little bit. On our fake 4300G, we're getting a similar kind of thing. We're hitting around about the 90% mark though on the GPU. CPU is absolutely fine. As you can see here, I've got to turn the hardware hacks on so you get a bit of ghosting. But it's perfectly playable on, let's say, the 4300G. Here we have Akami. NTSC version again, running at three times the total resolution. Here, the 4750G is struggling to get 60 FPS. At two times resolution, it's absolutely fine. But at three times, it is hitting that 100% on the GPU quite a lot. So with GPU limited here, maybe a slight overclock would be able to achieve a solid 60 FPS. But as stock, it does struggle. By comparison, our fake 4300G when you get two times total resolution, it runs absolutely fine. We're getting about 60% use on the GPU and we're getting a solid 60 FPS. So this game is probably going to have to play at two times resolution on both APUs, at a guess. Once again, there's tweaks and stuff you can do, but this is just without any, any fiddling around. Now here we have Sly Cooper, when you get three times total resolution. This is the PAL version, so 50 FPS is the cap. As you can see here, the GPU and CPU are in the 30s, so no real problems here running this game at this resolution. But let's knock it up to 6x. No surprises here, it is struggling at 6x. You might be able to do it at 5x maybe. GPU is pretty much topping out, which means we can't even hit the 50 FPS cap. Which is a shame, but you know, not bad at all when you can see it's just on board GPU. Now moving on to our simulated 4300G. When you get three times in turn of resolution, no surprise at all. Running absolutely fine. We're getting about 50%, 60% GPU usage. CPU is absolutely fine. So perfectly playable at three times in turn of resolution. And the NTSC version should also be absolutely fine at this point. Now time for some Resident Evil Outbreak. This is the PAL version when you get 60 hertz. For whatever reason, three times in turn of resolution, certain screens will drop down into the 20s in terms of FPS so the level select and character select are really bad for whatever reason but in game it's actually okay at two times internal resolution the menus are fine at this point and in game we're getting perfectly fine performance you could probably run three times in game no problem on this particular APU it's the same with the 4300G where I simulated one absolutely fine performance for this game no issues at all, perfectly playable at higher resolutions. Just gotta watch out for those menus for whatever reason. There might be a fix, I'm just not aware of one. Well as you can see, the PS2 emulator runs absolutely fine on these APUs. Of course you're gonna get occasional issues where some games aren't as well optimized. But overall, PS2 games run absolutely fine at two times and three times internal resolution, depending on the game. So if you have a 4300G or 4700G, perfectly good for PS2 emulation. Of course the 4300G is a bit slower, but that shouldn't stop you running at two times the internal resolution in most games. Which is absolutely amazing when you consider it's just an integrated GPU and 65W TDP at that. So that's all I wanted to say today. I might look at some other emulators in more depth later. But I play a lot of PS2 games, or like to play a lot of PS2 games when I get a chance in high resolution. So this is going to become my new emulator machine. So I'm happy with performance, and I hope you are too. So like, dislike, comment below if you have any questions. And subscribe if you can. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.
So goodbye.